the heart that pleases God, the heart that trusts God, the heart that has confidence in God. Wherever you may be, you say, I am nothing, my life is in your hands. A hundred percent without any limit. The hope of your life you surrender it before the hands of God. For except just having confidence in him. A heart that is thankful to God. God is pleasing to the heart. Before he told you that the, the seat of God, the seat where God sits, is his glory, is the thanksgiving that we give him. That is his food. That's why it is written, God resides in the thanksgiving of his people. The heart that is always thankful is the heart that God will sit in. The heart that is always lamenting, God does not dwell in that heart. But when you thank God, God will come and sit with you. I know why I like God dwells in the thanksgiving of his children. Not in prayer. Not in the singing. Not in the evangelism. Those are the things that we do. But where God dwells, it is the heart that are thankful. That is where God will dwell. It is not hearts that are resentful. That's why God told Israel when they are to cross the Jordan. He said, if you are going to cross over.
confusion in Europe. Well, Ukraine is under destruction. The war of Russia and Ukraine. The world is under confusion. There is a deal. There is a big problem the other side. The seven nations have been divided. The G7 has been divided. Right now, there is no clear way of leadership. The people that are preparing speeches for politicians, they have a lot of confusion. Until they say it publicly. The one leader said there has been a change of many things. The world leadership summit that they had done has been removed. Even the system that they don't understand. When God is doing that, he wants to scare the world. So that you, in your little you become a solution. And then, they will bring wealth and serve and gold. So that you give them the solution. The God wants you become a solution to the nations so that you restore that wealth unto yourself. That is the third restoration we talked about. The, 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 restoration, the, the way of honor. God told them I'm going to God wants to honor the church. When that honor comes to the church, it is not the honor for men. That honor does many things. And we talked about it. The first thing, it brings that confidence, that establishment for the church or unto a person. The second thing, it brings that honor, that kind of favor before nation. The third thing, it changes things. Because the glory of God has power to transform things that Because that it brings radical transformation. And we talked about it. When God is to do things, the glory of the Lord will be seen. And when it would come to the church, when it would come to the church, the things that were have to change, because the glory of the Lord is symbolic of the presence of God. The fourth thing, the glory of God, it raises people. Because God does not operate in a lower level. He operates under a high level. Those three things, those three domains, we talked about it profoundly. That is a plan of God upon the church. For the double portion. The Bible says. Let me close this before I go into the word for today. That you'll be given a double portion. It is not times two what you lost. No. It is saying by the word of the Lord that those double portion that God is giving to the church that what Jesus told Peter that God blesses us in this life we receive the first portion in this life in this material world. Us and our children. We get the first portion. And he multiplies it so many times. 
for the things that we portion. portion the second portion is for eternal life. The plan of God does not stop with this material world. If there is honor that God is going to give you, if it is wealth, if it is operations, the first portion it is unto you. You your family, your children. That was Jesus told Peter. That people that left their own and followed me in this world, I multiply them a hundred times. They are thing God is going to do in this life. When we are here together with our children and our family, we see them. If it is honor, we become honorable. If it is wealth, we become wealthy. If it is operation, we walk under it. When we are still there with our children, that is the first portion. The second portion. Hallelujah. It's for the glory of God. Jesus said, in this life, we shall have a hundred times. But what is more, the biggest portion, the biggest portion, hallelujah, is the second portion. Is the time we're going to enter eternity. When we are in eternity, the thing that we have never had, the things we never saw, the things we never thought, they are things that were somewhere. Even the people that are there don't know it. Even the great don't know it. But the second portion is great. The worldly people not get it. The wealth is by the people. But the second portion is for the children of God. Even the world, hallelujah, is expecting for the things that are yet to come. When Jesus is in the air and will call us, we shall enter into the second portion. We will be with him forever. Walk with him and be glorified. The glory that has been prepared for us to are here. We will receive the glory there. We receive his goodness. John says that blessed we are children of God. Hallelujah. But how we shall be in the second portion we are not yet revealed to them. But when we see him when we see him in glory when we see him in honor we shall be like him. We shall be with him in his glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See the fulfilled world. That is a double portion, second double portion. Let us not only think about this. Level. Let us, our eyes see here. Also see over the other side. Prepare for that. There is glory waiting for us. There is operations waiting for us. There is wealth waiting for us. When we arrive there, we shall be satisfied. Hallelujah. That is a summary of what we talked about. We are going to close today with another word. We're talking about principles. So for those portions to be realized. We talk about principles. We talk about principles. We talk about principles. We talk about principles. We We talk about principles. We talk about principles. We talk about We talk about the things We learned in details. We talk about principles. We 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 talk about We talk about We talk about We Today we are going to talk about in the 30 minutes that we have what do we need to do? God operates under principles not under emotions. Telling you things are okay. That is true. But for you to realize 
analyze them, you need to operate under principles. We are going to talk about principles in three categories. How we can realize to the first portion here on earth and the second portion that we shall inherit in heaven. The first principle. Three principles, but in each principle, different categories. The first principle talks about life. When we have a heart that is righteous before God, or a heart that pleases God, that is a principle that looks at life. Or the heart. And because that is how God sees it. For you to inherit the portions of God. You need to have a life that pleases God. God does not operate under emotions. But he moves by the principles of the people that honor him. When God is to start operation, for the person that walks with God, he looks at his life. We need to have our hearts, in other words, to, to see whether your life is pleasing to God. When does the life of a man please to God? There are men that God testified about and said that their hearts look like the way I need it. For, so that my heart and his, for, to be pleasing to God. Let me talk about five things. The classification of a heart that pleases God. One is a heart that is clean. The heart that does not hold sin. That what Paul talks to Timothy. Second, Second Timothy two. chapter 2 and verse 21. That if a person cleanses himself and separates himself from all wickedness, they will be a noble vessel. They will be a noble vessel. The life that does not hold sin, the life that is clean, that is the life that God works with. Even when I do many things, in the time that God looks at me, and, and sees my life is a mixture of many bad things. Even when you do great things, you cannot inherit the double portion. God rewards his people. We know that God is a God that rewards. The, the first characteristic is that heart that is pleasing to God. That is when your heart is sanctified is sanctified. The reason why Daniel was pleasing to God is that he purposed not to defile himself with anything. The whoever you call Daniel, that means he's a friend of God. One of the characteristics of a heart that pleases God is the heart that is always seeking to God. It is one thing to cleanse yourself. Seeking God is also another thing. The heart that is longing for God. So that you have that 
daily urge to seek God. Nitoa udi yavuze muri zamu. That's what David said in the Psalm. Ngo mutima ngo kimbaraka zai ishaka mazi. That as a deer panteth for the water. Niku mutima wanje nanje uguhoru kunyote. So my heart longs for you, O God. Kubera ku Daudi yashaka gimana. Because David was seeking God. Imani kawana ko ari mayishaka. And God saw that he was longing for God. Yaravuze ngo nabonye umuntu ufite umutima nkuko mbishaka. Then he said I've seen a man after my own. Imani mwa imana yishimiye umutima wa Daudi. One of the reasons why God was pleased with that of David. Nuko umutima wa Daudi wageze imana aho gushaka ibintu. Is because the heart of David is always seeking God instead of God. The problem that we have is gushaka imana. We come to seek God. When we are looking for him. Ayo masengesho yitwa gusaba. And we call that prayer just a thing. We just are begging. But the prayer that pleases God and attracts God is a prayer that seeks God, not material things. Seek God first. Instead of seeking things on God. You want a wife? You want a husband? You want money? It is your right. But that kind of prayer does not please God. The Bible says when we ask, we shall receive. But that does not please God. So. Let me repeat that. When we are asking God for things, it is all right. He will give them to us. But that prayer does not please God. Yes, God will remember. But the prayer that pleases God, the prayer that pleases God, is a prayer that is seeking God. You can say I'm going to sleep here. I need God. That my heart is longing for God. Everything that is within me, everything is longing for God. That's why God would tell David. God told David that the first thing are not things. Is God. What does prayer mean? Prayer means the things that we lack. You lack the things that you lack. When you are lacking God, God is pleased. When it is things, God will listen to it. Give them to you or not. Because he also has his right. The heart that is longing for God. The heart that is longing for God. How many times do you sit and have three or four days longing and seeking God. You feel that thirst, that longing for God. When you have that thirst for God, let me tell you, when we are asking something for, from God, in the low position, probably I'm asking for a car. God will release it. But God will not come down to that day. He will release the vehicle. You will get it and take it. You will thank God or not. But when you tell God I'm longing for you. God will lift you up. Did you see that? That is how it is. Some of us are just at a lower level looking for things and God will give them to us. But the day you have an understanding that you are seeking God, God will get you and take you up. Say, what do you need? Then he will reveal his heart unto you. And then he will take away your poverty. The heart that seek God. The third thing. The heart that pleases God. This is the heart. That wants to establish the workings and the will of God. 
that seeks to know undo the will of God. That is what the psalm writer is saying. Chapter 1 and verse 1. That blessed is a man who sits not scoffers. Wicked people and you know the story. And in second verse. But he always longs to understand the laws of God. And he meditates upon it day and night. You can ask yourself what is the will of God? You rush to do the will. I want to do more what God wants than what I want. That's why Jesus said that my work is to do the will of the Father more than what I do. That is what it is. When God has an understanding that you seek more what he wants than what you want. He will trust you more than you trust yourself. That's why Jesus told the disciples that when you pray. He said let your will be done. That is how things will be better. Sometimes because of emotions you may think that God does not have a will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The fourth characteristic is a heart that is always auditing itself. Self-analysis. Job said, let me measure myself by the measure of the law. So that I see whether I have not gone astray. Every time you do that self-evaluation, so where, where, where did I fault? Where did I do wrong? You are not being judgmental. But you are evaluating how you relate and do things. The words that you've spoken perhaps were wrong. One of the things why God loved Job. He could do the offerings of introspection. Perhaps I have seen, he would say. Perhaps my children have done wrong before God. That introspection or self-evaluation is good. There are people who are just a mixture of things. They don't have any self-evaluation. The principle of the word of God. Before you sleep on your bed. You need to do a self-evaluation of your life and measure up and see, am I doing well or not? I don't have time, perhaps I would have talked about it in the Bible. Sometimes a life of a Christian there is a line that you must follow. The fifth thing. Those are characteristics of a heart that is pleasing to God. That is a heart of humility. That's why Paul wrote to the Philippians that have the same heart that was in Christ Jesus. Chapter 2, Philippians and verse 1. Even when he was equal with God, he humbled himself. Even in that humility, the Bible says, they that humble themselves will be lifted by God. But to the proud God will oppose you. There are times when we are in a life circumstance. 
We are humbled by the thing the circumstances. That is not humility. We are humbled by the circumstances around us. But the humility that the Bible talks about is the time when you are way high up there and you take yourself as a servant. That's why the Bible says God, Jesus was like God in heaven. He had the honor. The Bible says he humbled himself from the level of God and angels to the level of man to the level of a servant and to, be, to be the lowest of the servants. The, 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 the servant is a slave. For him he was not a slave. He was a servant to a slave. And he said that is not <inaudible> enough. Then he agreed to die on the cross. That was the lowest level of humility. And then Paul says you also. If you want to be pleasing to God. To be humble. Stop being proud. Don't lift yourself up because you're a manager or you have a diploma. You have a vacant and say, I will not be taking them. Please, Randis. We have that sickness within. That is why we are always hypocrites. You despise them because you are better. God is not pleasing with that kind of heart. That kind of humility of the heart is what God is looking at. There are principles under which you have you, Your pride will not take you to a double portion. It is not possible. You have to humble yourself whether you like it or not. Let me repeat this. The people that have that pride I hope you're listening to me. There are people that have pride. If you need the double portion of God, you need to humble yourself. You don't have to be humble. You have to humble yourself. Similiate. Humility. Or either whatever you do will come to nothing. Uh, the, the last characteristic of the heart that pleases God. The heart that trusts God. The heart that has confidence in God. Wherever you may be, you say, I am nothing, my life is in your hands. A hundred percent without any limit. The hope of your life you surrender it before the hands of God. That is a great thing that God 
That's what David is talking about. The time when he sinned. And God told him, choose three punishments. Whether it is disaster, whether it is famine, whether your adversary is come against you. And he said, what I decide is, let me fall in your hand. And he said he was not living as a king. He said, I myself, I surrender myself in the heart. When you read Psalms 51, when he was repenting of the sin that he did, he was like a child without a he said, I surrender myself and went for before you. If you kill me, you kill me. He became naked before God. He said, You are my salvation. That's why Job is saying that whatever comes, even when God slay me, yet will I trust in him. I am in the hands of God. Whether he kills me or not, I don't have any other solution. One thing I know, even when he kills me, and he tramples over me, I will not leave him. I am in his hands. My confidence is in God. In, I don't have any solution. I don't have any other option. But my heart has convinced me that I cannot do anything. So even when he kills me, hallelujah, I have trusted in him. Even when he cuts off my head, he will slay me when I'm trusting him. As I conclude on that point, a heart that is already thankful, Except just having confidence in him. A heart that is thankful to God. God is pleasing to the heart. Before he told you that the, the seat of God, the seat where God sits, is his glory, is the thanksgiving that we give him. That is his food. That's why it is written, God resides in the thanksgiving of his people. The heart that is always thankful is the heart that God will sit in. The heart that is always lamenting, God does not dwell in that heart. But when you thank God, God will come and sit with you. I know why I become God dwells in the thanksgiving of his children. Not in prayer. Not in the singing. Not in the evangelism. Those are the things that we do. But where God dwells, it is the heart that are thankful. That is where God will dwell. It is not hearts that are resentful. That's why God told Israel when they are to cross the Jordan. He said, if you are going to cross over, there are things that I'm telling you. But the fifth one that is important, that when you're in Jordan, big stones, 12 stones, get them to the middle, meaning the testimony that is internal, the one that is in the heart, Take another toll. Take it to Gilgal. Meaning that see what the Lord has done. That is the thankfulness of God in us. Tell your children. This is what the Lord did. This is a testimony. This is a testimony. This is a memorial of the things that God did. When you are already thankful, you get God and attract him in your own place and tell God, sit here. That's why when Jesus was in the rest of the world, he knew that God's dwelling was in thankfulness. For God to do great things, say, let me just thank him. And said, oh God, 11 John 
I thank you for you always hear me. You always hear me. He was creating the seat of God. And then after that, he did not pray because God was there. He gave a command and said, Lazarus, come out. They he did not pray, he commanded and said, Lazarus, come out. And then Lazarus was resurrected. Thanksgiving was already there. The, the heart that is like that, when you have them, you have a completeness of the heart that pleases God. Wow. Hallelujah. That is the portion of God. The heart that pleases God. There, there was one preacher that came when we were still in Congo. He had come from Bukav. And God sent him to where we are saying. I don't know these people. How will it be? And they say, I will show you. God told him, I will show you how to enter. That that house is where I stay. And they will welcome you. What will show that to you? You'll find them when they are praying and giving thanks to me. And they, that con con man came. And he told, God had told him where we were staying in that village. When he was there in the village, he looked around. And when he arrived at that center where we were praying, in that house of prayer, God told him, just stand there and turn on the right. And when he turned, he found when we were laughing. And God told him, that is where you will stay. And God told him, every time you come to Mdenje and to visit or preach, you always come to that house. There are families and hearts where God dwells and some where God does not dwell. All the people that are in Rwanda are not Rwandese. All the people that come here to church, it is not us, not all of us that have God in our hearts. Sometimes God is your neighbor. To some people, God is a neighbor. To others, God stays so far away. There are those also who have God dwell in them. And when you touch them, you see the hand of God upon themselves. And the second thing now, that is the word for today. The double portion is there, but it needs people with certain kinds of hearts. You cannot say you will score when you have not played. You know that we will score, we will be victorious. Some people even know they will not come pull it out, but they will just say that they are going to. God works under principles. I said in the sovereignty of God, there are three things. One, 
God is almighty. He doesn't need any help. He does whatever he wishes. Number two. God does whatever he does in love. He loves you more than you love yourself and your mother. And you can even lose a job in his love. But the third thing that marks the sovereignty of God, God is just. When, when he moves by those principles, you will see. If you are not under the principles, even when you speak in tongues, things will not work. The second principle is work. I don't have time, I'll just rush. Being workers or hard working. God does not give people that don't work. In Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 10, say that the righteous will be, it will be well with the righteous. For they will harvest the works of their hands. The thing that we are saying, the second principle, we need to be hard working. We don't need to be lazy. If it is in the work of God, we need to be hard working. If then we offer, then we pray, then we preach, then we sing. Because we work under different things. There are spiritual works that we have to do. There are also things that we do that support our family that we need to do. It is not sleeping. We ought to work hard. God is a worker. Jesus said, I work. Even my father worked. He said, I work. I don't have time to sleep. Because my father is a worker. I have to do what I am supposed to do. God operates under the principle of remuneration. We have people that are lazy and they have the cover of being under God. The Bible says whatever you do, whether it is for God, whether it is normal things, do it with all your heart. Be committed to doing things. Don't just be negligent. As though you are purposely. Work and have a plan for your work. Whatever you find yourself to do, because God will reward the things that we do more than the way we think about it. Let me just give you an example. In among the people that were rewarded by God, and he rewarded them well, is his son Jesus Christ. This reward that Jesus received was not only because he's the son of God. But let me tell you three rewards that Jesus and he was rewarded because he was. The Bible says that as the heavens could not find a person. And Jesus said, I will do what other people fail. So that I may save the world. God did not know what to do. We, we also did not know what to do. Then there was a gap between man and God. There was nobody that wanted to sacrifice. And Jesus said, let me do this. And after doing that connecting work of the, the work of redemption, let me tell you three things that he received as a reward. The first one, 
God raised him in glory and in the name that is above every name so that every name every time will say that he is the Lord and the glory he received the glory that Jesus received he worked for it it was not his faith the glory of Jesus has, above all names above all families above all kingdoms in the things to come and now he worked for it he did not have it before God said because you have done well I'm going to raise you in glory be above all kingdoms in heaven and on, on, on earth the second reward that his name was changed operations the way we do things he received a name above all names we don't receive salvation in the name of God. We don't receive salvation in the name of the angels. We receive salvation in the name of Jesus. He worked for it. Said in heaven and earth. All people that will believe in you will be saved. If they don't believe in you, they will be saved. That's why it is written. But God gave his only son. That whoever believes in him. That whoever believes in that name of Jesus will be saved. The third reward God gave him the church. When he had redeemed man, God gave a church to him. He said, You have redeemed the church. But it is not me taking it. You have brought it. It is you that did that. And God gave the church to him. So you have brought the church to me. Uh, yes, I'm pleased. Because the church is the greatest wealth in heaven and on earth. Say so all wealth that God was longing for. As the raw material, all the wealth that God wanted was the church. And when Jesus had finished doing that, say, all the cabinet of money of the church, I give it to you. You are the head, it will be the body. You will be the bride and it will be the bride. The final word today over the church is of Jesus Christ. God gave the prerogative of the church to Jesus Christ. He has the final word. God only does what Jesus talks about the church. The principle is we ought to be hard working. The last thing is faith. Everything that we do we ought to do them with faith. Let me talk about five things about faith. You will not inherit your promises if you don't have faith. The words that we've just talked about. From the book of Numbers, they were about to cross over. Some ten people never believed. Only two people believed God. That is why they inherited the nation. What is faith? It's a mindset of possibilities. And we pick it out of the word of God. The reason why the two inherited the nation the thing that they had over others is they believed God. Others never believed God. They that believed the nation 
God so and said I give you the nation I had told other people that I will give you the nation but because you brought discouraging words and never had faith go and die in the desert let me talk about this and then after we pray. The faith that will help you to inherit what God says has four different things. The first is to understand what you are believing. That's what Paul talks about in Romans. 10 and verse 17. That faith we receive by hearing. And we hear the word of Christ. The first thing that helps us to have faith is for you to be able to listen and understand what the word is saying. They had heard in Canaan that they were going to, to, to Canaan and they had heard God say that. That is the first step. The second step is to accept that word as true. When we talk about the physics, some just have a slogan like that of physics or economy. To believe that what God has told you is true. That's what I talked about with your pastor. The things that I talked about the pastor, there are people who are doubting it. The first thing is to understand that what is said is true. It is reality. That is what Abraham said. Whatever God told him, he took them tangibly. Faith is not in the past or in the future. It is now. Jesus said, whatever you pray for, with faith, believe that they have happened. Faith is in the present. Hope is in the future. You take it as true. When you see Abraham, before he changed to become Abraham, he changed the name to call his wife Sarai and call himself Abraham even when they didn't have children. He said, Mother of nations, even when they didn't have children. I say, Father of nations. And in the village, people could not understand that. The, he understood and took it to be true. Number three. You personalize it. You own it. Caleb and Joshua said, this is our own nation. That the promises I've received belong to me. In Greek, they call it Rema. It is not public, but you own it. Logos is the word unto all. Rema is the word that applies to your life. That is personalizing and owning something. He said, this is mine. I'm going to apply it. It belongs to me. It is now if you picked it from the word of God as a promise and you're on your own I say this one is no longer of Joshua it belongs to me God starts to write it upon your name but the last stage is proclaiming it confessing it and you start telling it to your children. All the things we talked about about double portion. 
you start confessing it. Joshua and Caleb declared it. Others who had started dividing the people, if they had believed and kept quiet, it would not be profitable. But it was necessary for them to declare Others were crying and going back to Egypt. But he said, but for us, we see our nation over there. We are going to go into the nation. It is our belonging to us and our children. When you don't proclaim your faith, it is not operational. The Bible says that we believe with our heart. We confess also with our mouth. When we own it, the second and the last day, we confess and discuss. We discuss with our children. Whatever you believe, the, the, the promises that you have, the thing that you pick from the word of the Lord, it becomes a song for every day. The, the singer said, God is my song and my song. If you believe it confidently, when you don't proclaim them, so we believe them. God cannot apply because the principle of the word of God is what creates God, the time. And we have yeah, the time. When you believe something and say it, you are creating it. Joyce Mayer says that she was a prostitute. And he prayed that all those things would And he said, God said, okay. Then he said, I don't see any changes. And God told her that you have not said anything. That I took away that thing. But you did not create something. If you don't speak, you have to proclaim something on your, soul, on your husband, on your children, on what you do. Yes, I also apply what you are saying. She used to have a lazy. And said, This daughter of mine is going to be a coordinator and a role model. He used to have a son that was lazy. I'm going to, my son is going to be a role model. That time she didn't have a good direction. And she said, I'm going to be an international preacher. She was chaotic at home. And she said, from today I'm going to be a good wife. All the three, all those things that she said. Today, as speak, the son that was part of Joyce Meyer, she's the one that coordinates all the ministry of Joyce Meyer in Africa. The daughter that was chaotic, she's a coordinator of Joyce Meyer programs in the US. She is saying that now I'm writing it. That I'm going to be taking two days in a week. That I cannot be annoyed more than five minutes. Even when there is reason, but I not, not be annoyed. That the way I can't be annoyed in seven more than five minutes. In my ministry. It used to be in her house. And she said she's going to be an international preacher. Now she teaches more than two-thirds of the world. She's among the world. She's among the world-renowned preachers. Why? She proclaimed it. What do you say in your family? What do you say to your children? What do you say to your husband? God will do what you believe. But also what you declare. When Abraham was to sacrifice Isaac, he had believed that he was going to restore. But he told his own people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They say here, I'm going over. We shall come back together with the son. 
He did not receive yes, it. He knew that he would take Isaac. He would sacrifice him. But he knew that he would come back with another person. Greater than Isaac. And that is what happened. He took Isaac without promise. When we came back, he came back with Isaac with a promise. But he had proclaimed it. In Genesis chapter, he says, stay here. I'm going over with the child. We shall come back. If he would not come back, the son would not have come back. He says, we are coming back. He knew that the two of them would come back. Time has come for you to change what you confess. If you take it as a Whatever you think about God, whatever God told you, whether on your children, whether on your family, even the things it not tell you, but you want them, confess them and create them If you want your child to be excelling, speak it out. I saw that. I speak out the scores of my children. Why don't you create what you want in your family? Whatever you speak and believe, God will do them. That's why among your promises, and the thing that also picked from the word of the Lord, and the things that you also think about, speak them out. And God will apply. May God help us. May God bless you. Have faith. To speak it out in your families and then you'll see the hand of God. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Shall so you stand and we pray? Uh, I went a few minutes over Amen. I'm sorry for taking five, 15 minutes over. But I know that each and every person took a portion. I know that you've been helped in one way or another. I've also been helped. Because all of us, God rewards us. We are going to pray. The prayer that I have as I was preaching is, we are going to pray that uh, David said that creating me, creating me a new heart. And then raise my faith. Because the things you're preparing for us, we may take ownership of them. So that we may become like Joshua and Caleb. So that we inherit the promises of God. The Bible says they had a different spirit. As the Bible says. Hallelujah. Um, Amelie. Tura <laughs> Thank you.
Mabat. Mana bare bare miti ma bishasha, miti mi kunese sa, miti mu tura mo, miti ma wishi mira, miti ma mogani ra, miti mi kengos, miti mi kuizera, miti mi kuiringira, miti mi chavo gufi, miti mi tunga. Oh la dikke le brille koja le dikke, koke le akoja le dina. Mana tu sa amure mu kuizera, igi skwara kuge wa mo singo mo bare mere kuizera. Na tu turu kusabje ngo, imo kuvi shambor yawe. Dore kutizera na kuri gendera mo, kujana mo de tang mo sa mo kuiye. Kukari ya bukani ngo ba kuri ni ni vita sanswe. Kwa kuzama ngami mana, kumu kishabantu wa sumu vishi shambor yawe. Kani wili mo tuwe sumu kirene sumu jago ba kukor. Kwa kuzama kuri vista kando ni kuzi. Kwa kuzama ngo. Ya sala mo kisha. God bless you. Shubari ya. Ah, gai hano. Azatu sabi mo kisha. Mani humugisha umushumba watu Mani mana Uzusi Ukomezi Na mwe mwubi shijamburiki imani Imani wa kirenezi Usena mwubi shijamburiki imani Mukorenka mwubi shijamburiki imani Haleluya Mwanyi menela tukongira imana mashi kukwiji Mwanyi menela Na wechani Muraza kumu wona Saa kumi Saa kumi 